Hello, my name is Felix Feng. I'm a professor of radiation oncology, urology, and medicine, and vice chair for the Department of Radiation Oncology. And today I am going to be talking about the management of oligometastatic prostate cancer from imaging to therapy. Uh, here are my disclosures. So let's begin with a question. What is oligometastatic disease? And it's actually defined as an intermediate state of cancer spread between localized prostate cancer and widespread metastasis. It was proposed as a distinct clinical state a number of years ago by Sam Hellman and Rolf Wechselbaum. Um, and typically it's defined as one to five metastasis. So overall a limited amount of metastatic disease. Now, why has the oligometastatic space increased in the context of prostate cancer? And really the answer is because of the increasing use of PET imaging. And so this is data from the increasing use of PET imaging on the left from Melbourne at the Peter McCollum Cancer Center. And Michael Hoffman gave me these figures. And basically you can tell that um, when this hospital got access to PSMA PET imaging, uh, as Dr. Hope has discussed earlier, uh, the number of uh, um, PET scans went through the roof. And similarly, because of Tom and, and Peter Carroll and others, uh, PSMA PET was brought to UCSF and steadily the, the, the number of PSMA PET scans increased. This was data from a couple of years ago. Obviously the numbers are bigger now. And in addition to PSMA PET, uh, Aximin or Flucicavine PET is also currently available at hundreds of imaging sites across the United States. Both PSMA PET and uh, Aximin are now FDA approved. Uh, Aximin is reimbursed by Medicare and some private payers and hopefully PSMA PET will be reimbursed as well. And I think one point to bring up is that PSMA PET identifies oligometastatic disease at levels of low PSA. And this is our experience we published a couple of years ago, uh, 125 patients with biochemical recurrence, which is BCR after surgery. 38% of them had a spot outside of the pelvis. 30% of them outside, had a spot outside of what would be considered a standard radiation field. So these areas of red here are actually uh, consistent with oligometastatic disease in most patients. And so this has led us to the conclusion that the increasing use of advanced PET imaging has led to the increased detection of oligometastatic disease and therefore uh, the creation of a new disease space of sorts. So the next question is, what is the best treatment approach for oligometastatic disease? Well, in order to understand oligometastatic disease, we need to understand kind of where metastatic prostate cancer comes from. And so there have been studies done uh, looking at cancer samples uh, from patients who unfortunately have died of their prostate cancer. Uh, and this is a study out of Hopkins where they did a lot of genomic sequencing. And if you do deep genomic sequencing of cancer samples, you can kind of construct an evolutionary map of sorts within a single patient and figure out what spots of cancer led to what other spots of cancer. And from this data, uh, the, these investigators concluded that both the primary tumor, meaning the one in the prostate, and also existing metastases can uh, uh, seed or be the source of new metastasis. But it turns out that the principal sort of mode of spread is from one metastasis to create another metastasis. And thus to cure oligometastatic disease, one might need to get rid of not only the primary tumor that started out in the prostate, but also other metastasis to prevent them from seeding new metastases. And so when I see a patient with oligometastatic disease, I think about three different approaches for therapy. The first is prostate directed therapy. Um, and so I think yesterday, uh, somebody asked a question in the chat, is there any data for radiating the prostate in patients with metastatic disease? And it turns out that the Stampede Arm H trial led by Chris Parker was a randomized phase three trial of radiation, which I've abbreviated RT, versus no radiation to the prostate in men with newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer. It was a large study to over 2000 patients and 40% of patients on that trial had low metastatic burden. And it turns out that what the study showed is that radiation to the primary tumor uh, improves outcomes uh, for prostate cancer patients with low metastatic burden and specifically improves overall survival. So here you can see what we call Kaplan-Meier curves and the y-axis for the top two plots is what we call what is overall survival. And so basically, uh, and the x-axis is time. And so if 100% of patients lived uh, the line would uh, never dip downwards. It would be straight horizontal across. Every time the line dips downward, 
uh, it means that unfortunately someone has died of prostate cancer. And so the lower the line, the worse the outcomes. And so here you can see that patients who got radiation shown in blue did better uh, than patients who did not get radiation to the primary if uh, the patients had low metastatic burden. For patients with widespread metastatic disease on the right, there appears to be no benefit for radiation to the primary. On the, on the bottom, you can see failure-free survival, which is another endpoint. Um, and here, what you can see is, again, a benefit to radiation uh, to the primary. And so another pillar of management for oligometastatic disease is metastasis-directed therapy. And there have been two randomized studies uh, which have taken patients and either treated their metastatic disease with radiation or not treated their metastatic disease with radiation. One was a STOMP study. The second is the Oriole trial. And because we're, we're limited on time, I'm only going to describe the Oriole trial. So the Oriole study uh, basically randomized patients with oligometastatic prostate cancer to either observation or stereotactic ablative radiation uh, to metastatic sites. And here you can see the outcomes. This is progression-free survival, um, meaning how many, or what percent of patients did not progress uh, after treatment. And you can see again, this is Kaplan-Meier curve. So the higher the line, the better patients did. And the patients who got radiation shown in blue did better significantly than the patients who did not get radiation. Now, what's interesting is that um, uh, in oral, patients who received the radiation had variable coverage of their metastatic disease because it turns out that the metastatic disease was defined by conventional imaging uh, with CT scan uh, and bone scan, but that you know most patients also obtained a PSMA PET uh, to which the, um, uh, uh, the physicians were uh, blinded. And so it turns out that about uh, 19 patients had radiation to every single spot seen on PSMA PET and 16 patients had radiation to only part of the total number of spots of cancer seen on PSMA PET. And it turns out that those patients who received stereotactic radiation to all uh, the metastatic sites seen on PSMA PET, these are patients in blue, did better than patients uh, who had some untreated spots. And so, this leads us to an approach where we want, if we're gonna treat a patient with oligometastatic disease, we wanna to try to treat all the sites of metastasis if possible. But at the same time, it turns out that, you know, sometimes we can't tell how patients are going to do. And I'm gonna give you a tale of two patients. This is patient one. Uh, this is somebody who underwent a prostatectomy in 2007, uh, had a PSA recurrence treated with salvage radiation and four months of androgen deprivation therapy in 2013 and uh, uh, then presented to me with a single oligometastatic disease in the left pubic ramus with a slowly rising PSA that you can see up to 1.3 in 2017. And I hadn't treated him earlier. So I saw him for the first time when he had oligometastatic disease. He had no other sites of disease. And so it turns out though, that uh, when I was planning his scan or his, his, his radiation treatment for oligometastatic disease in 2017, I went back and looked at his old CT scan from 2013. And I realized that the spot that was lighting up um, uh, on his current scan from 2017 was still present in 2013. It was just never seen previously by the treating team. And so this patient had a single site of, a uh, single detectable site of metastasis despite almost no treatment for over four years, no emergence of additional metastasis during this period. Um, and so this means that this patient had very stable disease, oligometastatic disease, it didn't really spread anywhere else. I radiated him and you know, uh, four years later, he's free of disease, um, uh, not on any medications. A second patient here, very similar course, also after surgery, also received salvage radiation and short-term hormone therapy. Um, you know, and then he came to me uh, with this spot in 2017, PSMA PET scan. I again radiated the same spot uh, but it turns out that even though I made this spot go away, there were multiple other spots that popped up uh, around the spot that I radiated uh, e even over one month. And so not all oligometastatic disease is the same. This first patient I showed you, you know, the tip of the iceberg, which means the part of the cancer we saw in PSMA PET, that was all there was. And when I radiated him, he was disease-free four years later, no other treatment. The second patient, I also radiated tip of the iceberg, and then the rest of the iceberg popped up. Um, and so for patient one, 
you know, maybe this patient just needs local therapy for the primary and the metastasis. For patient two, uh, he, he needs systemic therapy. And so it turns out that there's a number of trials that have tried to intensify systemic therapy for patients with high risk localized prostate cancer as defined by conventional imaging. But I bet you that a number of these patients, if they all got PSMA PET, would have had oligometastatic disease. And one could predict that the subset of patients with oligometastatic disease are the ones most likely to benefit. And so in conclusion, oligometastatic disease is increasingly diagnosed due to advances in molecular imaging. Treatment intensification approaches involve local therapy to the primary tumor, metastasis-directed therapy, and intensification of systemic therapy, and randomized clinical trials are needed to determine the importance of each. And ultimately, better predictors of less aggressive versus more aggressive oligometastatic disease are needed. I'd like to acknowledge our team at UCSF and also collaborators uh, from other universities who have worked with me in the context of studying oligometastatic prostate cancer. Thank you for your time.